Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Soraya Sadeen, our speaker.
That changed my life. Then I went back to Afghanistan to forget about my loss and to see how others cope with their tragedies in life. Afghanistan was in the midst of a civil war and was drowning in her sorrows. I saw the agony of millions who were either internally displaced or became refugees in neighboring countries and forgotten by the world. After returning, I left the real estate business and established a small nonprofit organization in Virginia called Help the Afghan Children. In the next seven years, my initially unorganized philanthropy helped provide humanitarian aid to an estimated 1.5 million people. September 11 was a turning point for me as it was for the world. I remember that day so vividly. After the initial shock, I went to the office, took the sign off, and closed the door. I was certain that no one is going to help anymore. And talking about Afghan children might even provoke anger. But I saw the side of America that I never knew before. A generous, kind, and caring America. <laughs> to my surprise, we received letters of support and, and encouragement. We received donations and offered to help that made it possible for me to realize my dream of providing education to the children of Afghanistan, especially girls who have been barred from going to school by the Taliban regime for many, many years. So we refocused our efforts to building schools, training teachers, and introducing innovative programs to thousands of students. Programs like Peace Education, which is a sequence of teaching encounters that may be defined as the process of acquiring the values and developing the attitudes and behaviors to live in harmony. Since initiating this program, we have seen remarkable changes in students' behaviors in embracing the principle of nonviolent conflict resolution, tolerance, and their improved self-esteem. The program introduces students to a new way of living and learning the value of striving for peaceful solutions problems and encouraging them to respect religious, gender, and ethnic differences. Currently, over 100,000 students are enrolled in the organization's sponsored schools, and there is an ongoing effort to persuade Afghanistan's Ministry of Education to include our field-tested program in today national curriculum. However, the Ministry of Education comes up with excuses like lack of funds and limited school hours. But well, isn't it ironic that funds are always available to buy weapons to fight for lasting peace? But when it comes to implementing peace, there's a shortage of funds. I can assure you that the cost of providing peace education to over 8 million students in Afghanistan is less than buying one war play. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that promoting peace through education at schools will help students develop the principle of nonviolent conflict resolution, tolerance, and respect for diversity. I believe that promoting peace through education is a preventive care 
that cost much less than building and maintaining jails later. Okay, I guess I'm preaching to the choir, right? <laughs> and now I'm going to ignore about, again, about the advice I received at the airport when I came here first and talk about politics a little bit. I think of myself as an American first. I am proud of this identity because as an immigrant, it came to me through deep conviction and hard work and not the accident of birth. I also think myself as a wife, a mother, a girl from Afghanistan, a humanitarian, a philanthropist, a Virginian, and on good days maybe as an intellectual. But in today's political climate, I must embrace another identity that I forgot about. I am a Muslim. No, no, I am not a practicing Muslim. I'm secular in my outlook. But as I watch the way in which the new administration divides Americans, I realize it is important to acknowledge the religion into which I was born. And yet, that identity does not fully represent me or my peers. I have multiple identities and will not be forced by anyone's rhetorics into one single box. I will continue to promote greater interfaith and cross-cultural interaction, an act of goodwill that neutralizes the ability of demagogues to divide our communities and manipulate popular support for their actions. because it gets boring. So I have one more thing to say. And that's about this book. I'm not a writer. But I wrote this book to talk about my wild experience as an Afghan American woman in a tough and unforgiving land where girls and women could not go without a male, could not go out without a male chaperone for many, many years. I wrote this book to celebrate the resilience of girls and boys in Afghanistan whose quest for knowledge in the face of many life-threatening obstacles has been my inspiration. And I wrote the book to inspire others to follow their sense of humanity by, as Gandhi said, the change being the change they wish to see in the world. Thank you.